And good day. You're flying Torona's very unfriendly skies where everybody wants to kill you. Alright, so we have the Swift, and I've had this for a while, and I've had a full steam of head building ever since I got the aircraft. So, let's go over the historical aspects of the aircraft, as I've, a lot of you say that you like, and I like doing, and so let's get this out of the way. Uh, the Supermarine Swift and the Hawker Hunter were both um, reactions to a British uh, MOD uh, proposal uh, during the time of uh, Clement Attlee, who was the successor to uh, Winston Churchill as Prime Minister towards the very end of World War II, um, was not a big proponent of using of government investment in a time that um, Britain was really struggling. Uh, part of it was that you have to understand that I believe it was 1954 when Britain finally uh, let go of food rationing. I kid you not, 1953, 1954 time period. Uh, strangely enough, during that time period, British health got healthier. <laughs> Not normally what you expect. So I don't know what that says, but there wasn't a whole lot of fat. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, the meat, and the whole country began to get healthier uh, during rationing than before it. That's different. Um, yeah. That's a true story. Anyway, it gives you an idea that the financial straits that Britain was in. Um, and one of the conclusions of the government was going to be at least 10 years uh, before um, they needed new uh, to be purchasing and procuring and developing new aircraft. So basically what they did was they said, no, what we're going to do is uh, build research aircraft until it's time. Ew for us to, uh, excuse me, I yawned, this wasn't going to be denied until we get the aircraft we want to get. You know, and it's time to get them, and, uh, and um, the Korean War popped up, 1951, 1950, I believe it finished in 53. Um, and the British government was allied with the United States, and still is. Um, a very special relationship between the two countries and always has been for since World War One, really. Um, and this was one of the two projects that came out. And it was by far the least successful. Which makes me go back to World War planes and go, what were you thinking? The other aircraft was the famous Hawker Hunter, which was a huge commercial success, big export success, uh, did a whole lot for the British aviation industry. Um, and this aircraft could have been just as good if it had not been pushed and rushed into production. Um, problem here were manifold. First off, you had a early, very early variant of the uh, uh, Rolls-Royce Avon engine. And it was problematic. Now, that's killed a lot of American aircraft, it's caused problems for Soviet aircraft. You, you know, you wait for an engine and the dust dust can come out of the development cycle quite right. It went on to be the famous uh, uh, Rolls-Royce Avon line of uh, turbojets. And some of these things were coming out, very late variants, up to 10,000 horsepower. We didn't have anything comparable. Uh, in the realm of flight, at this age, the British were the kings of the great engines. Sorry, but just the way it was. We excelled in electronics, we excelled in airframe development, and in a lot of ways we were very much advanced on anybody in the world in the United States, but when it came to engine development, nobody was better than the British, period. And it showed. Um, so the F-1 came out and they built a small batch of them, 16 MOCs were built in small batches. Um, 
and people start dying. It had severe handling problems. You had an unreliable engine to it. It's just as bad as it gets. And if you have any questions about that, see my videos on the F7U uh, Cutlass. And if you think that one is bad, you should have looked at the F6U Pirate. Woo, with those are horrible aircraft. Um, but the, they kept working and improving, and by the time they got to the FR-5, they actually had an aircraft that was worth something. The problem was that the Hawker Hunter was already out doing a better job, heavier armed. Uh, it was just slightly slower. And improved marks of the Hawker Hunter actually exceeded even that parameter, which leaves you with an aircraft that the both MOD and the British public are wondering, why in the hell are you doing this? And the answer wasn't because it was an embarrassment to the British government if they didn't actually cut their losses and go on. Um, they produced, after the Mark V, there was a Mark IV, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The last one was a photo reconnaissance version, which was an extremely successful aircraft, but there weren't many purchased, all of which were replaced by Hawker Hunters because they were better in every aspect. Um, and that's the sad history in a very condensed format, of course, and there you sit. Now, as for in game, let's talk about this. Your gun armaments, you have two uh, of the um, Aiden cannon. Now, we've talked about revolver cannons. This is the British version of it. Survivability is 499, which is not bad. Airspeed, 489, excuse me. I get a little far away from my monitor and my eyes are not what they used to be. Yeah, 489. Airspeed is an excellent 373. And I had this thing spec'd for, um, upgraded for um, maneuverability, not speed. It could be a good deal faster. Maneuverability with the specs that I got, and let's go over the specs because it does affect everything else. I've gotten the lightweight uh, power unit, and I've gotten the lightweight uh, wing frame. When I spec it out, I will put um, the uh, upgraded engine in here, and I will put a improved uh, fuel mixture in here. And I will probably work on the burst length instead of uh, accuracy with this one because it is a horrible gun. All right, so we'll get to that shortly. Altitude performance is pretty outstanding. So in most aspects, this is a great fighter. And as I've already alluded to, the guns suck. I mean, yeah, I'm, they are just bleeding awful. as they are implemented in the game. And I will uh, show you what I mean. Now, does that look to you like a blooper gun? Because that's what you get. A re reminds me of the uh, LA-160. That fabulous, fast-firing, world-famous Aiden Cannon has been turned into a slow blooper gun. The velocity of the shells were the 30 millimeter shells was 2,600 feet per second. That's 100 feet per second slower than a 30 out six. 
It's about and about the same for the 50 caliber machine guns. And its ballistics are nowhere close to either of those, despite the fact that it would, because of the heavier mass of the shell, it would carry on its velocity much longer than either a 30 caliber or 50 caliber bullet. But that's what we got. And it lets down the entire aircraft. Now, mind you, you have spent nine consecutive levels to get to this point, And you get a beautiful aircraft, good turning speed, good altitude, good airspeed. And you get this. And I'm stopping because of before I start cussing. I can't cuss on this channel. You know my stance on that. The, uh, I want... And so you know why I, I don't cuss on the channel. I want somebody, if Grandpa wants to bring his four-year-old into his lap or Dad wants to bring his four-year-old little girl or little boy into his lap and show my videos, I want him to be know that it is okay, that there's not going to be a lot of cursing and cussing on this. All right. This is a this whole aircraft, this whole airframe is let down by its guns. It is horrible. Now, after you fly it enough and you get dialed in on the guns, you can do stuff. But when it gets into uh, long transitions, long lead times, when you have to pull a lot of lead to get to an aircraft, it is almost useless. Get behind it, you can settle down and take them out pretty quick. But if you can't, and the dwell time on it is horrible. Okay, so this is not something you particularly want to uh, get involved in. You know, I just, this is something the World of Warplanes needs to um, sit down, figure out what they want to do, and fix this thing. It's a slow-firing, very arcy cannon. And there is no way that it should be. I'm going to throw that video in here again. You tell me what you think. So you get my point. This was a Korean War level gun equivalent to the M39, the 23, uh, I'm sorry, the 213C, the French Difa, and it comes out as a thump, 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 thump gun. <laughs> Not right, not historically correct, not even near historically correct. And I understand this is an arcade game, but even in, by arcade standards, this entire work that you've done to get to Tier 10, and you get this. Let's go to game. Okay, so welcome to the flight portion of this video. And we will see what we're getting and what I'm Show talking about. Do, Why am I so let's disappointed? Roll. Well, let's get to it. It's fast. That suits the aircraft, by the way. It was uh, held a world record for a number of years. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely missed all those shots. Disappointing to say the least. Because of these 30 millimeter cannons and you actually hit, there's no mistaking when you hit because it dies very quickly. Now the cooldown is fine on the aircraft, but you've got to be able to hit 
with the guns. Which is, you can see the amount of lead I'm pulling. You get on target, it's pretty darn devastating. Okay. Is that the kind of gun you want to take into battle with you? Well, I'm going to suggest not. Long range shooting is a guessing game. Well, that's probably not what you're looking for. Uh, and you can very quickly overrun aircraft too uh, with a lot of these uh, high speed fighters you can because of speed disparity and cruising speed you can quickly find yourself yeah I've got the speed brake on I'm still well over 300 miles an hour And the F-84 is a near competitor in turning speed, depending on how he's outfitted. And if I'd had any sort of decent gun on him, he'd already be dead. As you begin to dial on the gun, dial in on the gun, it gets better. But okay, you also have the ability to dis to disengage. So by the time the FJ one turns around, you know you're out of his range. That doesn't do me any good against the I-15 and his long sniper cannon. But gives you an idea of some of the options it gives you. Now uh, we've entered a mode where every time I show up, well, you can see the score. And you can probably guess what I'm thinking is the cause of it. Okay, so they're going to keep attacking in there. I'm going to do what I can to make life hell for them. You see how slowly the shells hit after. I pull the trigger on this just to the point of absolute stupidity. And then we get to the other unpleasant surprise about this, which is that you uh, very short burst length. This is what happened. Now, can you kill them? Yes. Does it take longer than it should because of the nature of the uh, guns? Yes. Should it be as arky as it is? No. Step it up. We're losing the battle. Now you can see the design philosophy behind the cannon, the, if it was outlined as deserved. If you got into a aircraft that, uh, in your sights, you would hit them with five, six shells in the first burst. And five or six bursts in a 30 millimeter will absolutely destroy just about any cannon that's out there. Attention all aircraft, fall back and regroup.
Now, I promise you, had that been a uh, P1101, I could have doubled my kill count. That's the result of this gun. Poor design, poorly implemented, uh, and, you know, the reward for playing through the British line is you get this. And it's left down on only one affair, the guns. The guns are terrible. Okay, I'm not asking you to give me an absolutely killer set of guns, but it's got to be more useful for this in high transient, uh, long deflection, large deflection, than it is at this current, uh, current point in time. This is crummy. Folks, I'm coming to the end of this. It is my honest evaluations. You can agree, disagree. I encourage you to do both. The last person on earth that thinks I, I am always right is me. I do not. Uh, bottom line is I want to hear from you, your opinions, your thoughts. They matter a great deal. Suggestions for dealing with it. Maybe I'm doing things wrong here. That's fine, too. Um, I want to encourage you to like the video, to subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by going to the main page and clicking on the Patreon link. Thank you very much. You have a great day.